Just sealing off that hole, now I'm gonna seal off this hole. The key is to seal it off so there's no snow coming up into the turbo compartment. I told him that. All right, we got our stock hole for the exhaust plugged. And I also silicone it down. And as you can see, I tape off and plug as many of the other holes as I can to try to keep that compartment sealed and no snow, so snow, no snow can get in there. So as you can see, I've already cut out the template. There is two different lines. This one is an XM. Obviously, I'm working on XM. So you'll want to cut the gray line. Fits right in here like so. I mean, there's lots of ways to do it. I mean, if you're perfectionist or whatever, you could tape it up there and make sure it's hold. You know, drill a pilot, drill, whatever you want to do, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Simple as that. Hold her up there. Drill it. Rip up the paper. Wham. Exhaust hole. I always do burr all my holes. This makes it look a little nicer. A little bit cleaner. Not a big deal. Now we're going to install the check valves in your rave system. First thing I like to do is a little mouth-to-mouth -mouth action. Suck on there, break the seal. A lot of times they're still sealed from the factory. Get in here. Cut this hose. Some nice dull scissors. Slide that on. Doesn't come with zip ties. I like to put some zip ties on there though, just to be safe. Next, pop this little line off. Your vacuum line. Just like so. Take this spring out, cut half an inch off of it. I've already done that. Take this, it's gonna, this part's gonna slide on where you popped it off. Down in there, like so. Bam, bam, bring this other side around. Plug her into that guy. So now, same thing, I'll zip tie this, all the hose clamped areas. Instead of a clamp, I'll use a zip tie. And I'll also use zip ties to kind of hold everything, just so where it won't move around. It's something I do on my personal sled. I like to jump and kind of beat them up a little bit, so I, you really got to make sure everything's secure and even the stock wiring harness and stuff, they do a real good job of making sure it's secure, but you always got a few areas. You, it's always good just to kind of tidy stuff up and make sure that it's not going to bounce around and hit stuff. You have to drill this rivet, get rid of your spring holder. The next step, We'll be uh, bolting the turbo onto the exhaust cradle. The larger bolts are to hold the flange on the exhaust piece here that you see. This one's welded. I will not be doing that. In your kit, you will be using those large bolts to bolt the exhaust flange to the turbo. Just snug the bolts up, finger tight. You want to keep them loose so when you get your assembly in your chassis that you can kind of fit it to your exhaust and make sure everything's kosher. So once we have the cradle assembly loosely bolted onto the turbo, we'll stuff her in the chassis. I put the exhaust hole in the exhaust hole first. Rotate the cradle. Make sure you get it all the way in there. Just slide down. Pull the pipe over. And voila, just like that, she's in there. With the turbo still loose, We'll put our exhaust springs on. Kind of fit her, make sure she's gonna sit where you want her to sit. They give you multiple holes down there so you can kind of get her where you want her in the chassis. You want it nice and close to the chain case cover 
but also put your panel on there and kind of check the distance inside out should fit perfectly in there just give you a little gap, gap on each side from the panel and the chain case from the turbo always make sure you put some anti-seize on the threads before you install it just bolting the exhaust cradle to the right hand foot well part of the chassis right now Next step, just put the oil in the turbo. You're going to have to cut off the, the little nipple here. You'll notice there's two brass nuts. One has a hole, it's a vent. The other one is where you will put your oil in. You will put both of the bottles in there. They come in the kit, two full bottles. Now I put a little Loctite on there, as you can see. Reinstall the plug. We get a lot of questions about how do I need to change the oil? Um, the truth is, it's a lost oil system. Um, you never need to change it. Uh, if moisture gets in there, boils out, it's fine. Um, as a general rule, check the oil once a year. If you forget to check it for three to five years, it's not going to uh, make any difference. There's plenty of oil in here. We use very little oil. So every year, check it. There's a video online about how to do that. But basically, there's an oil level in here. We want to maintain somewhere between half of an inch and one inch. Sometimes this cap can be a little tight, so you might need to put a drop of oil around there or something to slide it on, but it should be a nice snug fit. Next, we'll grab the charge tube, install it. Pretty self-explanatory. Big end's gonna go over to your air box. The small end's gonna come to the turbo. Goes right over the top of the upper A-frame like so. Slide it on with some ease. Sometimes you'll have to loosen up the the blow-off valve and rotate it so this tab's pointed down. Next, you'll grab the fuel line that's provided by Aero Charger in your kit. Pop the little white tab out of there. That one's gonna mount directly to your ECU. Press it until you hear a click. I like to route it under the frame here through the tube, pop this little guy off, next we'll ins install the wiring harness, this red power wire is going to go to the fuse and the black ground wire is going to come down here to this chassis ground. Next step is to install the solenoid. This is for our fuel controller. Um, this is an opportunity uh, that we can maybe alleviate a few tech calls. Uh, basically, we've got a solenoid here. This is uh, very similar to the solenoid that controls the ray valves. As a matter of fact, it happens to be identical. But we are adding an additional one. Um, the one that's on the sled stays there. Um, basically, everything is plumbed the way it needs to be at this point. This does stay open. This is not to be connected at any time. This stays to atmospheric pressure. This side of it goes to the throttle bodies. It's labeled manifold because it's the manifold side of the throttle plate. Um, there's a little brass fitting that uh, we'll show you later. One goes in each one, and then this fitting here does go to the blow off valve that is attached to the charge tube. This side here then goes up to the arrow commander. Take some of the zip ties provided in the kit. Kind of get some of the routing started on your hoses. The routing of the hoses is definitely one of the most critical parts of the kit install. You don't want any of these lines to get pinched, chafed. They all need to have a clean routing in order to have a reliable, good running system. I'll usually, or I'll always also put a dab of silicone there just to help with the vibration and make sure it doesn't slide around when I'm jumping. Nice little dab there. Also one on top. Depending on your needs, you might cut a little extra of the hose just to make sure that you don't have a bunch of extra hose in here bound up, just to make sure that the routing of the hose is as clean as possible.
Then you're going to have to pop off the black rubber caps on the brass nipples on the throttle bodies. Just get some needle nose, pull them off. Then you take your two lines and plug them in onto the brass fittings. I'll use a little bit of carb cleaner, or I'm using the PJ1 Super Cleaner here. Spray it on there. All the fittings are going to be real tight. It's necessary. This is the one from the, from the blow-off valve down to the hose we're installing. Once you're on there, should be good to go. So now we'll reinstall the gas tank, hook up your lines, your plug. This line that used to plug into the ESAM is going to go into our new connector here, just like so. Beauty. Don't forget to install your vent. Next, we'll, we'll route the Arrow Commander. Also very crucial, especially the blue hose. Any of the boost hoses are very crucial on how you route them. Go up here for now. Come back to it in a little bit. Kind of tuck these in here. Separate your lines. These two will go over here. And these four will come over here. These two go to the throttle body, or actually the new injectors, right next to the throttle bodies. Unplug this guy here. Take this guy over to one of your power sources that we hooked up earlier. And the last, last cable will get hooked up to the solenoid here. I'm just going to take a zip tie and kind of tidy up, clean up some of the wiring that I ran. Again, just to make sure that it, it stays in place, doesn't move around, get chafed, get in the clutches, whatever. So now I'll take the boost line out of the solenoid we installed. It's labeled Aero Commander. Plug that deal in there to the Aero Commander. Now we're going to install the gauges. All of the gauges we're installing are the air fuel and the boost gauge. So remove your desk key, that little nut loose. We will reinstall it over here in a little bit. So now I'm going to drill the hole for the desk key over here. I cut the template out. You can tape it down if you want. I'm just going to hold it. You're going to want to use your two inch hole saw in the top hole, which is the bigger one for the air fuel. Then you get your inch and a half drill bit, hole saw. Now I'm going to install the desk key. As you can see, we've mounted our gauge pods. It's all pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple. At this point, we're going to reinstall this rear A-frame so we can install our plastic and gauge gauges. So now that we got this put together, reinstall it on the sled. Just plugging in the hand warmers. A little bit farther away now that we moved them over there, but no big deal. So once you get all your air fuel gauge stuff plugged in and the sensor tightened down, you're going to have a bunch of slack that you're going to have to take up and zip tie up on the frame somewhere. Here's the tube that connects the uh, front air box to the rear air box that goes into the throttle bodies. There is a sensor in this tube that we need to remove and then plug it back in onto the factory wiring harness uh, so the computer gets its proper readings. Um, these little uh, uh, all little speed nuts is what sometimes we call them. Pry them off, cut them off, just get them off however you can. 
uh, tie this up in a location uh, next to the frame and we'll show you that here in a second. The next part is to remove the main air box from the hood. There's going to be a few screws here. Now we've taken those screws out, loosen up these guys. Slide forward, like that. Die quarter work. The hose that goes from the main air box to the ECU, we'll take it off the air box, plug it back into the ECU, and then I just dump it back into here. It's just to keep it clean, keep stuff out of the ECU. Tuck it back in there out of the way. Now that we have the sensor out of the air box tube, we'll reinstall it where it goes here and then zip tie it up just sitting in the chassis here. The zip tie it up anywhere so it just doesn't bang around. So now we're reassembling the plastic and the headlights. I got the little clip nuts on all the brackets. Slide those in there. They should be labeled to right and left. Couple more screws here. Good to go. Make sure you get your head headlight assembly power plugged in. Open your glove box, plug in your gauge pod. Make sure you clip in the bottom first, press down, should clip right in like so. Remove any soundproofing material if you haven't already to prep for the installed events. I'm just taking off the warning labels now, get the heat gun out. I take the red filament out of the vent, kind of use it as a template. And then you can get your hole saw and drill of choice and fill it up the whole red area. I'm just gonna drill the vents you can do it any way you want, whatever hole saw, what drill sizes you got. I recommend deburring all the holes. Makes it a little cleaner looking, and helps the air flow a little better. So now that we got all the holes drilled and deburred, we'll install some of the vents. Make sure you're kind of Got all the debris off there and it's nice and clean. Line it up best you can. Something like that. Yeah, make sure you're, you clean your panels best you can. Maybe use like some kind of cleaner that'll take the oils out of the, the plastic. I like to uh, the, the rub the glue to edges. Get the temperature up there a little bit and just make sure it's pressed down tightly. You can hit it with the, the heat gun. But be very careful and stay stay back because it's very easy to blow a hole in them. Hey everybody, so that's, um, everything's installed. You did a good job showing everybody. Hope that was uh, educational for you. And I guess the big test is, will it start? Every time, <laughs> they always start. Well, let's so. find out. <laughs> Make sure you got this red button up. It's kind of crucial. Yeah, that's what's nice about the E-Tech system is it, 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 it'll start first pull every time. Um, the system goes in smoothly, uh, as you saw, and I hope this helps you out. Any other questions, feel free to give us a call anytime. And, and again, thank you for uh, purchasing the product, and, and we work hard to make sure that you're satisfied with it.